this work? It's a technology for rewriting the code of life. So it works by cutting DNA and triggering cells to actually make a precise alteration to the DNA sequence in a cell, and that can propagate to an entire organism. How do you see this being able to be scaled? Could we see it be used in a large trial? What's, what's amazing about CRISPR technology is that it really affects all of biology. So it, it affects not only biomedicine, but also agriculture, synthetic biology. It's a tool that is universally able to alter DNA sequences in, uh, in cells of any kind. We saw this technology invented about six, seven years ago. Do you see it in the coming years being marketable, being able to be a sort of a real product that people could use more frequently? The amazing thing about CRISPR is that within about two years of the initial publications around this technology, there were companies that were founded. We now have several companies that are publicly traded. They're all interested in applying gene editing to solve real world problems in biomedicine and agriculture. I think we're on the verge of a, a real transformation in the field. Any timeline that you think we could see that? Certainly in the next five years we'll see clinical trials proceeding and the outcomes are unpredictable, but we're hopeful about those. You know, it was very interesting in the introductory package. A lot of it is focused now in China. Do you feel that China is leading the way more so on this than the U.S.? It's really mixed. I mean, the amazing thing about CRISPR technology is that it's being used globally, it's widely available, it's democratizing because everybody can uh, get access to it if they want to and, and, and deploy it for, you know, for better or worse. Do you wish that maybe U.S. companies or U.S., I guess I should say companies, would be taking more of a lead here, more of a charge? I feel, I feel that at the moment, commercially, that is happening more in the U.S. than elsewhere. Talk to you, me, about the types of diseases, where we could see this. We talk about cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. Where do you think if there were to be a product that was developed to cure a disease, what disease could that be in? Well, essentially any disease that has a single gene that is the genetic basis could be in principle cured using CRISPR. The challenge is how to get the CRISPR technology into the cells where it's needed. So I think the early targets will be blood diseases where we can do the editing outside the body or potentially in organs like the eye where we can deliver locally. So you said using cells outside the body. Is that really where the technology is? Do you think that we could transition where the technology could be due using cells inside the body? Absolutely. We're not there today, but that is absolutely where the field is headed. A timeline on how long you think till we get there? It depends on the new <laughs> technologies for delivery. So I think, again, we're probably looking at at least a few years from that. Do you have any regrets, if you will. You know, we talk a lot about the ethics in this space, hotly debated topic. Any sort of regrets or do-overs? No regrets, but I do think that it's important for scientists and everyone, really, to be actively engaged in the opportunities here and also the, the challenges. We need to ensure responsible use of the technology. What would you like to see from regulators uh, to make sure that we are using this technology responsibly? I'm pleased that the World Health Organization and the National Academies have worked together to put together uh, international teams of scientists who are looking into the technology and its opportunities and making, um, you know, I think some important uh, uh, guidelines that will be the basis for future regulation. And is the World Health Organization enough or do you need to see more local rules like you saw in China in that introductory where he felt like maybe he went a little bit rogue. There weren't enough controls around him on a, a more local level. Right. Well, I think we need both, really. And yeah. it's very hard to imagine how you could enforce global regulations, but I think there can be standards that are set by these international uh, groups of scientists that will set the stage for regulations locally. There has been some other ethical concerns. I'm glad that you're here so we can talk about these, about gene editing of those babies. What's the case against that? Oh, well, I think, you know, very clearly it's uh, premature to be doing that for multiple reasons. The science, the technology isn't ready for it, and also the, we haven't had the uh, conversations about the ethical implications of it either. Right. Where would you like to see those conversations go? Well, I, I would really like to see them uh, go in a direction of transparency, discussing how this t kind of technology could be used in the future to benefit human health, and also maybe where we should draw some lines. 
Can you talk about anything that you're doing now? I mean, you invented CRISPR six years ago or so. Any new technologies that you're really excited about now? Well, I think there are two real um, important challenges in the future for this technology to be really impactful. One is figuring out this delivery challenge we mentioned. Right. How do we get editing molecules into the right cells and tissues? So we're actively working on that. We're also very interested in pushing the future of the technology by looking at ways to change the sequence of DNA in cells in a, in a precise fashion to not only disrupt genes, but also introduce new genes. When we talk about the China trade war, so much within technology and healthcare has been about IP theft and protecting your intellectual property and protecting your business. From your perspective, do you see any concerns within healthcare, healthcare technology, biotech, about protecting your IP, protecting some of that property that, frankly, you worked so hard for to develop? There always needs to be a balance between protecting IP so that commercial advancements can be made and companies and investors will want to, to invest in, in technology, but also making uh, technologies widely available for future advances. And I think that's what we see for a platform like gene editing. We want to see it widely deployed as it is, but we also want to see protections for companies.